In this video we'll work another example of capacitor problems. We have a battery here that has 24 volts between points A and C. It's important to note that capacitor C1 and C3 are not parallel and that's because the voltage across points of the capacitor C1 is the voltage VAD while the voltage across capacitor C3 is voltage VAB. Now if there was a conductor connecting points B and D then they would truly be in parallel but there isn't. And point D and point B might be at different voltages. Likewise C2 and C4 are not parallel either. This is the voltage VDC and this is the voltage VBC. So they are not in parallel. C1 is in series with C2. C3 is in series with C4. Uh, we can say that there is some Q2 going this away and there is some charge Q1 going along this part of the circuit. So to find the equivalent capacitance, charge and voltage on each capacitor is what's required. We'll start by simplifying the circuit down to a single capacitor. To do that, we note that C1 2 is equal to C1 C2 over C1 plus C2. Uh, they're in series and there's two of them so we can take advantage of our little rule. Uh, we find that that's 1.4 times 3.5 over 1.4 plus 3.5, all of that in microfarads, and we punch that into a little calculator. 1.4 times 3.5 divided by 4.9, and we get that that's one microfarad, and that makes sense. It's less than either of the capacitors that we started with. And then we know that 3 and 4 are in series, so we can combine 3 and 4, C3 with 4, and that's C3, C4, C3 plus C4. This time we've got 2.1, 2.8, over a total of 4.9 microfarads. We punch that into a calculator as well. divided by 4.9 and we get 1.2 microfarads and that again makes sense. So we have a circuit that looks can be replaced where this capacitor can be replaced by a single capacitor these two capacitors by a single capacitor. So let me draw that picture now. I have 24 volts and between A and C there's A and there's C I have a 1 microfarad capacitor and over here I have a 1.2 microfarad capacitor this one has charge Q1 going down it. This one has charge Q2. Now, we now know that Q1 is equal to 1 microfarad times 24 volts by capacitance definition. So that's 24 microcoulombs. That means that there is 24 microcoulombs going into both C2 and C1. We also know that Q2 is equal to 24 volts times 1.2 microfarad. So Q2 is equal to, punch that into a calculator, 28.8 microcoulombs. So 28.8 
microcoulombs. Now we can combine this into a single capacitor. Twenty four volts and a single capacitor which is equal to one microfarad plus one point two microfarad is equal to two point two microfarad. So there's the total capacitance. I've already found the charge on each capacitor back up here. I know that there's 24 microcoulombs here, a minus 24 microcoulombs there, 24 microcoulombs on C2, minus 24 microcoulombs on the negative plate, 28.8 microcoulombs positive plate to C4, minus 28.8 on the negative plate, 28.8 negative plate and 28.8 on the positive plate. I now can find the voltage because I know the capacitance and I know the charge. So VAB is equal to C3 times 28.8. Unfortunately, running out a little paper here. Let me VAB is 28.8 .8 microcoulombs divided by C3 which was 2.1 microfarads. So we take that. 28.8 divided by 2.1, we get 13.7 volts. So this is 13.7 volts. We do the same thing here. V B C 28.8 microcoulombs over 2.1. 8 microfarads we get 10.3 10.3 13 13.7 gives us 24 as it should likewise we can do the same thing up here VAD 24 microcoulombs over 1.4 microfarads seventeen point one volts and the last one VDC twenty four microcoulombs over three point five microfarads 6.9 volts and when you hit 6.9 17.1 you get 24 volts reduce the thing to a single capacitor when you have a single capacitor and you know the voltage across it you could find the total charge by the way if we did that 24 divided by 2.2 then what we would find when we did the whole thing is that we would produce 52.8 microcoulombs, the sum of these two Qs. Use your knowledge of these nodes to work backwards. For instance, this Q coming out of here and going into point A is the same Q going into point A in this diagram. It's the same Q going up in this diagram. Likewise you can use the voltages. So work from the bottom, write all the drawings, and then work your way back up the top, filling in what you know. That's the way to be good at doing circuits. Alright, we'll see you in another example.